Well, we like to make things interesting. So, um, you know, we, we found a way down the stretch to, um, you know, I, I love the way our guys competed. I, you know, obviously we made some, some pretty, uh, you know, bonehead plays on both ends of the floor uh, in the final few minutes to, to, to get them back in. But what a big play uh, defensively to get the stop, got a huge rebound. And then uh, Cam Henry, you know, two, two free throws. And um, just really proud of this team. Um, it's been it's been uh, faced with adversity uh, all year, um, and just continues to come to work. Continues to try to find solutions. Never, um, you know, never hangs its head. Never says, you know, woe is me. I mean, you know, playing without our, our leading scorer, playing, um, you know, obviously coming off a really difficult loss that stung on Saturday against the against Valpo, a two point loss, and you know. Uh, the kind of character, resolve, resilience, fortitude, whatever you want to call it, that it takes to, to, to do what they do. I, I hope uh, people appreciate that, not just because they won, but just because uh, the way they, they fight, the way they compete, and the way they you know, just continue to, to, to grind away game in and game out, despite um, you know, circumstances that are, that are less than ideal. So a lot of respect for those guys. Um, and uh, certainly, you know, we all know Missouri State, it's, a, it's tough to um, you know, do what they did on Saturday and then come back and, 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 and play Tuesday um, and play a team that probably from the record standpoint doesn't look like uh, much of a challenge. And so um, we knew they might not be quite as ready to go. And, uh, um, and that's, that's, just, that's just tough. I've been on the other side of that where you're coming off a big win and you're playing a team that doesn't have a great record. That's, that's difficult to do. We were ready to play. And, and uh, again, just really proud of our guys. That's a, that's a great win against a, an outstanding team. Questions, please. Josh, before things got interesting, uh, the three-point shooting in the first half was obviously phenomenal. I mean, 11 and 19. Mm -hmm. um, what was what was creating those opportunities to, you know, to, for your shooters to get hot? I think it was a combination of things. I think um, early we got some transition, uh, some transition three opportunities. I think Simon hit one early, uh, Hobbs hit one early. Those were transition. They were guarding. Uh, uh, Julian with uh, with Prim and backing him in the paint. I thought Julian did a pretty good job of, you know, we're trying to learn or he's trying to learn. We're trying to teach him how to kind of weaponize himself when he's being guarded by a five who's standing in the charge circle, which is how teams are starting to kind of guard him. Um, there, there are different teams that played that and him understanding how to play and the dribble handoffs and that if he can go find shooting with the ball and that can get Micah, get Hobbs, get those guys opportunities um, off triple handoffs and off ball screening and, and those type of things. Um, and then we made a couple of, of, of tough ones. And then uh, Cam Henry made two tough ones. And then they switched and they put, um, they put Prim onto Hiddle. And uh, when, we, when we knew they were guarding, uh, they actually put him on Simon first. So when, when Simon got a second, we knew that Prim was guarding the five. And, and so we were able to go with Hiddle because we knew that, that you know, he was going to stay in the paint and kind of roam. And uh, we thought we could take advantage of that with, with Nick's three-point shooting. And, um, you know, he obviously made three huge ones in the first half and then made one that rattled around there in the second half. But we thought we could, could space with him. You guys probably thought that. I doubt Missouri State had Hiddle as a four for five three-point shooter in their scouting report. No. How, how good do you feel for him personally? Because he's before you got here, he went through a lot of injury problems. He's been patient in terms of getting his opportunity. And yeah. Tonight he got it. Nick is, uh, Nick is a phenomenal human being. And, and uh, there was, I would say, there was a time in October where it looked like his basketball career was over. Um, I mean, the doctors, nobody was sure if he'd be able to get back. He'd been out, I think at that point, 13 months without playing. Um, and and he had, they'd had all these different, what they call ramp ups and, you know, and his progressions. And he would get to a certain point in his progression, the back would tighten up and he couldn't go. And, and this happened, you know, repeatedly. And they were basically like, this is the last, you know, progression. And uh, um, for whatever reason it took, and uh, to see him come in and have success in a game like this and really, uh, you know, be, be a, a key contributor, play meaningful minutes and, and impact and affect winning, um, I couldn't be happier for him. He's just one of those guys that, you know, he, he's all about the team. He wants the team to do well. He's, he's a thousand percent, uh, you know, into the team. And we had a conversation on Sunday. He asked to talk to me after practice. And, you know, that, that was the question is, you know, is there anything I can do to, to get out there? And I say, you're doing everything. You know, Nick uh, usually plays the scout team. 
and he simulates other teams big. And so he was simulating Gage Prim the last few days and not shooting threes and, you know, trying to post up and do some things to give us a look at what Prim would look like with Missouri State. And, but I told him, I said, look, you know, you, you just continue, you're doing everything you can. He stands for Pratt his work. And I said, stay ready because you never know when your opportunity is going to come. And if you stay ready and you get your opportunity and, you, you know, you, you're ready to take advantage of it, you know, I can't tell you when it's going to come, but I believe in these next 12, 13 games, you're going to get your opportunities. And um, sure enough, Simon got two tonight and, and they were guarding when Prim was guarding him. We knew we could go to that. And that was uh, an easy, pretty easy decision for us. And Nick is. Uh, you know, on top of being a guy that can make threes, you know, he's he's by far the strongest of the post guys. Simon's the biggest and the most mobile, um, but uh, but Nick is is by far the strongest. I mean, they don't. I, I was just telling the radio, they don't call him the wall uh, for no reason. He is and he is an absolute, you know, just ball of muscle down there. And I thought he gave Prim some problems. I really did. I thought, you know, offensively his ability to stretch, and then defensively, uh, Prim's a load, but but he battled his tail off. Yes. Uh, given how hot Mosley has been, yeah, um, made him work for his 25 seven turnovers for Mosley. Uh, what was Julian doing tonight to, to make him work for what he got? I think just you know he was doing a great job pressuring him. Uh, you know he he really tried to you know tried to keep him off that right hand. Mosley's Mosley's so good. Uh, it's just wired to score. You could see every time he got a crack at it. You know it was it was in and and. Um, you know, uh, we talked before the game. I mean, you're not going to stop him. Um, he's too good. You just have to make him earn everything. You got to make him make tough ones. You can't bail him out. I thought we did a decent job, you know, not fouling him. Um, you just got to make him make him earn it, make him earn it. And and I thought our guys, you know, and Julian in particular, really did. And it takes a team, you know. I mean, but Julian's a guy that takes on those assignments. Um, he, he really embraces his role. He's another guy just like Nick that's completely immersed in the team. and. You know, whatever it takes to win. If it takes him, you know, running around and chasing Isaiah Mosley for 35 minutes, he'll do that. And he never touches the ball on offense. He'd do it in a heartbeat. And uh, um, whatever it takes for this group to be successful, you know, Jew's going to do it. And um, so it was great. It, it was really good to see. And, it, and again, it was a team effort. And they went to credit to Dana. They went to some some high pick and rolls, and and, and we had to make some adjustments in what we were doing. They they got him downhill in some different ways, but. He did as good a job as you could possibly do when it was one-on-one. -on -one. They had to go to some different stuff, some, some high pick and rolls, which they normally don't. They normally just isolate him up there and let him play in, inside of space. And Jude did such a good job on that that they had to go to some different layers of their stuff. And we had to, you know, obviously try to counterbalance that. But, man, that was, you know, Jude's, Jude's effort. And, 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 again, he got 25 tonight, but it took him 20 shots, and he got seven turnovers. So um, you can't do any better on, on what, you know, arguably is, you know, as good a score as there is in the country. In terms of poise, you know, getting a win obviously does a lot for taking the step towards poise. But in terms of finishing, as you mentioned, there were plays tonight that could have been very costly. Mm -hmm. How does how do these guys collectively, you know, build up the poise needed to finish? Because even though they did finish, it was probably rougher than it needed to be. Yeah, I mean, if that Mosley shot goes in, you go to overtime, and who knows what happens, and you you have this lead, and you you know. I mean, we obviously, I mean, I could, you know, clip them off to you from some out running under the goal when Mosley has the ball in transition, leave him over for three to some, some bonehead turnovers, uh, loose ball plays you got to make, uh, jumping in the air on the press and throwing the ball and turning it over, then fouling, you know, 70 feet from the basket. Um, I could keep going. But, you know, like what, what you have to do is you have to, to keep – putting yourself we got to keep drilling those situations got to keep drilling those situations and and you have to you you have to play with poise and, and discipline that's what i told them the locker room is hey that's a great win but it probably should have been a double digit win as opposed to a you know skin of your teeth deal not because we're double digits better than them but because of the situation the way it was if we play intelligent basketball on the stretch you win that game by eight ten points and, and that's the growth for this team. That's, that's going to be the growth for this group. And it's a unique group, like, right? We don't, we don't really have um, a, a quarterback, per se. Uh, Micah would be the closest thing to that in terms of a guy that's a, just a strictly a ball handler and can kind of get you in and break press. And, and, and Mike did a lot of good things. He had the, the one turnover, but, but he did a lot of good things there. And, and then you have to figure out how to close on offense without a natural 
you know, now if we have Tyreek Key, I mean, I, I probably look a lot smarter late game than, than you do. Uh, you put the ball in a guy's hands and he can take advantage in isolation. The game always slows down the final three minutes of a close game. Um, everything slows down. It kind of grinds to a halt and you have to kind of be able to make unscripted plays and figure out a way to get a basket when, when the game kind of grinds to that, that final two, three minutes and every basket becomes difficult. We have to be creative and try to find matchups that work. The last play, uh, we tried to get Henry on a switch, which we did. Uh, he got downhill um, on an advantage drive, and, and you know he just didn't get the call, didn't finish. I, you know, I can't see it down there. I'm biased, so every time, you know, obviously you would think he gets fouled. But, um, but, but we didn't finish it, and um, we got a good look. And then um, the possession before, we did a, did a poor job. Uh, you know, Mike uh, wound up with the ball and, and kind of fell and threw it to Hobbs for a Hail, you know, Hail Mary three. So we've got to be better. We're going to continue to work on it. We're going to go back. Thursday will be a day just dedicated to late game situations. I think you got to just continue to drill it and drill it and drill it. And then you got to learn from these in-game experiences and say, okay, next time. That's what we talked about, you know, before the game was, you know, the scars we've had making us better. You know, these close games we've lost, the, the late game situations, you know, some of the things we've done self-inflicted, you know, you get into, and I, I agree, there's some luck involved in any of these coin flip type situations. AJ Green shot rolls out. You know, it's a different ending in Northern Iowa probably if, if uh, uh, you know, Cricky shot rolls out, probably maybe may a difference overtime or whatever. Maybe it's a different ending on Saturday, but they didn't. And you can't control those things. you got to do the things you can control, and that limits the amount that luck plays into it. So we got to get a lot better in our late game closeouts. Hey, Coach, real quick, in the short time you've been here, safe to say this is your biggest win? Yeah, um, yeah, I would think so. This or Oakland City. No, I'm kidding. Uh, they, no, th for sure. Uh, yeah, I think, you know, the, the caliber of this team, um, you know, how good they are um, and, and just being in the Valley. I mean, the Bradley win when you're down three starters was a big win, I thought, you know, um, but to be without your leading scorer tonight and play, you know, I think people would say probably arguably the best team in our league um, that's coming off a win over Loyola at Loyola. Um, really, really proud of our guys. But um, you know, but yeah, this would be, I think, uh, fr from that standpoint so far. But hopefully, um, hopefully, we got some more to come. Fingers crossed.